I'll have to go into hospital now. They do say you should never work with animals or children, but hey, what do they know? Look at that little dog. And two trees to have a wee up. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm no stranger to hospitals. Yay! I used to be a children's care worker. Do you have a bed with no bed inside? Somebody nicked the bed. <laughs> and I still fancy doing me bit. So, I've come to one of the world's leading children's hospitals. Great Ormond Street Hospital. I'm the new ward, sister. <laughs> you don't let this get in your way. I think you're extraordinary. Even if it is just making them smile. <laughs> you're shooting, <laughs> Mum. This place is full of one in a million kids, and some of the conditions are just as rare. Hello. Good afternoon. Like Hi. 11 year old Fazil. <laughs> Fazil? Yeah? Lovely to meet you. And is this your mum? Yeah. Oh, it's nice to meet you. How are you doing, young I'm man? Good. Can you tell me about your condition? It's called a recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullosa. It's called what? <laughs> <laughs> is it a short name for this? Yeah, RDEV. Oh, um, but is that butterfly skin as yes. well? Yes. I've heard of butterfly skin. Your skin rips? Yeah. And is it painful? Yeah. Oh, dear. Can you write and everything? Yeah. Oh, so it doesn't hurt to write or um, use a it pen? Do, it depends, cos yeah. I can have bad hands. Can I see so... your hands? So you have to be very, very careful. Yeah. Yeah? And have you had this all your life? Yeah. Yeah? And how do you deal with it? It's not easy. Yeah. Fazil's condition doesn't just affect his skin on the outside, but on the inside too. Hi, Fazil. Do you want to come through? His eyes have to be checked for blistering. So, usual, have a peek, see how things are. So, just a little bit of orange, non stingy, and a bit like instant sunshine. You okay? Everything's it's orange. Amazing. It's quite amazing. So any little scratches or sore bits or dry bits show up green. Lovely. You look fantastic with that dying. You've got vampire eyes now, Fazil. Can I have a couple of drops full of leaf? <laughs> yeah. So both eyes have little dry spots. The left eye, there's a little roughened area where you've had problems before, but it's healed over beautifully. So at the moment, all quite good. So this is cream for skin protection. This is for infected wounds. And this is spray for dry skin. There's no cure for EB, a genetic condition which affects only 5,000 people in the UK. Loads of medicines. And Fazil's case is severe. They basically call us the butterfly children because butterflies' wings are really fragile and so is our skin. But then I don't let that stop me. I'm just a cool guy. Three, two, one, go. There are many things that EB children can't do, but then I try to make my way around them. So if I can't ride a bike, scooter is something I really love doing. All we can do really, just keep him safe from infections, from wounds, less pain, and keep hoping that they will find the cure. I have just one motto, never give up. It's life, you just have to get used to it and deal with it. The light's going back up. You okay? Fazil's getting some very snazzy, lightweight glasses to help protect the skin around his nose. Do they feel really light, Fazil, on your face? Yeah, light, yeah? yeah. They're really great specs, they are really smart. Thank you so much. They're fantastic. Thank you. I'm jealous. <laughs> Here at Gosh, they're constantly working on new techniques for the most complex and rarest of cases. <laughs> Got through the wrong door. <laughs> Ten-year-old Alexandra is arriving with parents down in Milan for an operation. Can I come in? You're the young lady who's having the big day tomorrow. So what's the operation going to be then? Reconstruction. Reconstruction. Oh. She's lost her. She's bones lost the eye. the eye. Sweetheart, you've been through the wars, haven't you? Eh? And what's the operation entail? 
Is it? Is it? Well, they're going to take a leg. They're going to take your leg. No. <laughs> <laughs> no they're going to take a leg. They're going to take a piece out of the leg. Yeah. So they can reconstruct your own bone and square it all up. So it looks just the same. God, you're going through it, aren't you, sweetheart? And look at you still smiling. She's you, always smiling. Aren't you a brave girl, eh? <laughs> Name three planets. Um, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Jupiter. When Alexandra was six years old, she was diagnosed with a chordoma, which is a very unusual bone cancer that affects just 35 people a year in the UK. Chordoma is usually found in the spine. Her you know, is no, orbital, it's... which is the bones yeah. around her eye, which is very rare. Although the tumour was successfully removed, doctors were unable to save Alexandra's eye. She also lost part of her eye socket. Can't give up. No, that's what we had to do for her to, say, be alive. What teddies are you taking? Um, I'm taking Use... my Minnie and that poodle. Minnie and the poodle. I would like to have this surgery so no one will look at me as much as they do now because people stare at me. That's your two teddies. And I don't want people to think that I don't look like anyone else. Craniofacial surgeon Professor David Dunaway and Dr Justine O'Hara will be performing the op. Hello. There we go. Can we put this behind your ear? So we're just from this point here, we have to make it look like this side, don't we? Just to give you the side of your orbit there, like the ice cream cone, yeah? And then a bit of your cheekbone here. The thing we worry about more than anything in this operation is whether the blood flows through the piece of bone that we've transferred. Is it a long op? We're thinking eight hours, but sometimes it takes longer. I love it. You're not bothered. She sits there like all this, and yeah. She's amazing. <laughs> yeah. The parents are different stories. <laughs> The medical staff here all play critical roles, but there's another important team who operate behind the scenes. I'm going to actually go and pick up a cot. I'm going to take it to PICU. And, uh, but you're very important people in the hospital, the porters, aren't they? I like to think... I like no, to but you are. Well. Like when I was a teenager, that was a prized job. My mother was always saying, get yourself up to St. Cat's, see if you can get yourself a job as a porter. Uh, so, should we go out and get this yeah, cot? Yeah, let's go and get this cot. Get the cot? <sighs> Ooh, a bit old for a cop, but I'll get in here. Me, personally, I try to make the child laugh. Hayden is one of over 30 porters here who walk 13 miles a day, and they are vital to the smooth running of the hospital. So this is a cot that we're going to take... Is that a cot? Yes. Do you know what I was expecting? Like, you know, little tiny, like, babies, you know, you pick up like that, like yeah, you get mother care of something. Yeah, luxury nowadays. The functions, like, lift the heads up, lift the feet up. Hello. That jelly looks nice. <laughs> oh, he's starving me. I know how to do my own pulse. You can all go home, you know. You can just leave it. In here, in here. Get on with it. In the renal ward, 16-year-old Sarah's had kidney problems since birth. Oh, listen to that. She's getting ready for dialysis, a blood cleaning process, and she's a dab hand at it. So this is your home three days a week? Yeah. And then how long are you wired up to? Four hours. Four hours. Depends on your weight, how much water's, and how much toxin take out your body. You know so... your stuff, don't you? You're an expert. <laughs> <laughs> now tell me how this machine works. So I have one needle here and one needle here. And this one comes out, goes around the machine, goes through the dialyzer, cleans my blood, and then goes back in through the fee needle, which is the one that goes back in. And what you doing though at that four hours on the phone, <coughs> laptop? I can be a bit grumpy. No, OK, that's OK, we understand that. <laughs> Sarah's absolutely incredible because she's so knowledgeable about her treatments, about the whole process of dialysis, why it's so important to her. She's got this wonderful positive attitude that I think we can... Up <gasps> that's my call, I'm onto the theatre. I'm only kidding. But not everyone is as independent as Sarah. There are 50 children that come to this ward three times a week for dialysis. And it can get pretty hectic. Four-year-old Tahim was born with a number of health problems, including kidney failure. He's been waiting for a transplant for three years, 
and his constant trips to hospital for dialysis is taking its toll on mum Ida. With five children, she desperately wants to do it at home. When you come to the hospital, it's not just the four hours on the dialysis. They have to include the transport going and coming back. It's the whole day. I'll be able to spend more time with my children, I'll be able to cook for them, and there's no more wasting time. Today, Tahim's nurses are assessing if Mum Ida can manage the dialysis on her own. Yeah. It's quite noisy. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hello, look at you. How are you getting on, Ida? <laughs> yeah. I believe you're learning how to do the dialysis yourself. Yeah. yeah. Sounds tricky. Yeah. Go on, big fella. I reckon she's going to need all the help she can get. Right. Team. Shall we get you weighed first? Come on, Flower. You're going on the scales. Good boy. There you go. On you go. Let's see. That's stay it. Still. Okay, stay still. Don't dance. Now we dance in a minute. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh. Keep still. Stop. Keep still. still. Good boy. Do you know I've weighed an elephant and this was easier? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> It's sort of in between 45 and 60, I'd say. Come on, big fella. Oh, dear. Now, how do you make a four-year-old sit for four hours? Yeah. Who's on the phone? Is that my agents? Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> they keep you on your toes, don't they? To him. Oh, what happened there? I don't think he's playing today, is he? Like that. I say stop. To him, I'm not giving up. I blame me actually for this. <laughs> you only have to put me in a room full of kids and they'll go loopy. To him. We need to get this done. Oh, Baba. Come sit with him. <sighs> Thank heavens for big sis. <laughs> well, they're having for that, I can tell you. I don't know how she copes, you know, Ida, really. She's got all this dialysis to do three times a week. I really don't know how she does it without cracking. She's quite marvellous, and she really is. <sighs> I have to have a drink. <laughs> there are over 40 wards of Gosh, each with its own speciality. Dermatological conditions are treated in Pelican Ward, where our butterfly skin boy Fazil spends a lot of his time. Can I come in? Hi. How are you doing, kidder? You OK? Yeah. It's been a busy day for you, hasn't yeah. it? He's here to see his skin specialist nurse, Harriet. So tell me, is there any, like, clothing that irritates your skin yes. and all that? When I was little, seams used to get stuck to my skin, and I remember once the underwear seams got stuck. It's painful. By here, and yeah, skin had come off. Did you have to cut them off? Yeah. Oh. So what sort of treatment then did, does he have? So you come to us every about three to four months, because unfortunately there's no cure. It's and dealing with it. Yeah. Dealing with it, isn't it? How do you stay so cheerful and so optimistic? And it's amazing, isn't he? Absolutely amazing. You really are, you know. I think you're extraordinary. This remarkable boy is now gearing up to tell all his schoolmates about his condition. I couldn't do that at your age. I'd have been hiding in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> OK, then. Let's see if I can help you out. So what's your opening speech? You've got to grab them in the first few seconds. Yes, I say, has anyone heard of recessive dystrophic epidermolysis bullisa? <laughs> like, my reaction. What? Yeah, well, that's what I said. <laughs> so I said, can you say that again? <laughs> so, like, I want to know more about this. I've never heard of this before in my life. I think it's marvellous you do this. Give them what form when you get up there, you know? Crack a few gags and don't swear. <laughs> 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 He's such a gutsy kid, the way he deals with it, the way he gets on with it. And I love the fact that he gets up and talks about it as well. You know, he's very, very special, believe you me. Are you good? Any questions? Alexandra is getting ready for a life-changing surgery with mum and dad at her side. Good afternoon. OK, well, we're all set, ready to go. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask us at all? Good. See you soon. Bye, thank you. 
Four years after losing her eye to cancer, she's about to have a major operation to reconstruct the left side of her face. 36, eight, perfect. She's scared. It needs to be done for her. It'll be worth it. Five, please. It's a hugely complex surgery that requires two teams. One to work on extracting part of a hip bone, while the other prepares for the reconstruction. What we're trying to do is just find the eye socket and the bits, that, the edges of where we need to reconstruct. This is a tricky bit. You're going to take some internal oblique with it as well. We've identified some beautiful vessels here, which are going to be great because it gives us both length and width for the blood flow to go through. With everything in place, it's now crucial that the blood vessels reattach to the grafted bone. What do you think? No, I think that's perfect. Um, we're doing all right. That noise is the blood flow, like a pulse, running through the flap. That's the sound of success. Good. Hi there. All is good. Managed to get a nice piece of bone from the hip, reconstructed the corner of the eye and made the cheek uh, very nicely. And all of the blood vessels that we were a little bit worried about beforehand have been absolutely fine. Yeah, we think it's great. Hi. How are you? Hi, yeah. Got you. Alex. Hello, sweetheart. Yeah, she's still coming round. Yes, but that's incredible. <laughs> Big difference there. You're telling me. Were you worried? I bet you were. Really? Yeah, we well, were. It's a long operation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's time. Yeah. But God, they've done a wonderful job. She's not in any pain or anything. No, no. they haven't had to top her up or anything. Oh, that's wonderful, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Look, I'm going to leave you. Yeah. I just wanted to see her, see how she was. No, no. Have a nice sleep. Say bye. Yeah. OK, sweetheart. <laughs> see you later. Bye. bye. I'm absolutely amazed, really, because all that cheek had gone, and now she's got perfect cheekbone, you know? And it was a, a very long operation, but you look at it and you think, my God, she looks incredible. They've just done some superb work on her. Just thinking of popping in myself, actually. A little nip and tuck. At school, it's Fazil's big moment. I'm feeling kind of nervous because there's loads of people here. I'm scared. OK, this morning we have a very, very special assembly. Deep breath now, Fazil. Good morning, everyone. Today I will be talking to you about my life with RDEB, which stands for Recessive Dystrophic Epidermolysis Belusa. Uh, if I had one wish, it would be to look like an ordinary child and for EB to go away. I know my life hasn't been the best so far, but I try to make it as awesome and as great as possible so I can live like an ordinary child. I think it's amazing how he can put yeah. so well. He was really brave. Yeah. yeah, really proud. It was actually really good. Really good. I'm really proud here, Fazil. And unlike me, you didn't swear. Tahim, I think he wants to go home. Today, Ida will find out if she can give Tahim dialysis at home. Tahim! Ida has passed. All of her competencies have been signed off, and that means she can dialyse Tahim independently on her own at home. Yes! We did it! Come on, Tim. We are going home. Let's go home. Oh, it's amazing. It's like a new life. I've got so much freedom now. I can't believe today I managed to cook my own lunch. I'm very happy. Tahim now only needs to come for checkups once a month. 
and hopefully it won't be too long before he gets a new kidney. Fingers crossed, so hope we'll get the transplant soon. Hope you'll enjoy your newfound freedom, Tahim. Not finished. Not finished. I don't know where. It's been a week since Alexandra's surgery, and I can't wait to see her. So cool. Hello. <gasps> look at you, madam. You look fabulous. Can I have a look at your face? God, that's marvellous. I mean, it really is. Are you pleased? Yeah. I bet you are. Good for you. So, how are you feeling anyway? Good. Yeah? No pain? No. <sighs> She's tough, yeah. isn't she, eh? Yeah, yeah. She really <laughs> is. She's hard. What's this you're making? Oh, this is a butterfly. It's for you. Oh, no, really? Oh, isn't that laugh? Thank you so much. It's really nice. Are you tired, love? No. Oh, I'm aboarding you, am I? Uh, no. Are you sure? <laughs> Let me know and I'll leave. <laughs> no, it's OK. Uh, well done, you. Really proud of you. I'm amazed. They, they do work miracles here, you know, because she had no cheekbone before, none at all. It was all sunken in. It's going on the fridge. Yeah. Excuse me, doctor. <laughs> really remarkable. I mean, it's life-changing, and that's what's important. One month later, and that op's already a distant memory. My beautiful girl. I love it when he does this to me. She's feeling good. She's very She's happy. She's very happy. In the next year or so, Alexandra will have a prosthetic eye fitted, but for now, she's riding high. I feel like I have more of a cheekbone now. People probably won't stare at me as much as they do. Then when I get my eye, I'll look just like everyone else. Next time... Aren't you a little tiger, eh? I get to meet this little fella who's been living in silence. I'm going to keep my mouth shut because I don't want the first thing he hears <laughs> is me. <laughs> and a cracking young lady who's been waiting for a new heart. Look at her. Ah, I gotcha. No, you got more. I gotcha. <laughs>